From Hollywood, the George Burns and Gracie Allen Show for Hormel and Spam. Crazy people. Spam, rebuff, boom, spam. George Burns and Gracie Allen on the show where there's orchestra. Singing glee with a smooth East 3. Last but not least, and who is Bud Easton? <laughs> Another Monday night brings another Burns and Allen show to your house with this swell dinner suggestion that it's as snappy as a new fall hat. Headline the evening meal with a Spam bake. Just open a can of Spam and bake this delicious meat. Takes only a jiffy, and you'll find the easy recipe right on the label. All summer, smart housewives have served Spam cold. Now that fall is here, baked Spam makes a real hit. When you bake Spam, you enhance the meaty flavor, the satisfying goodness of this delicious meat. You save time because Spam, a perfect blend of pure pork shoulder with ham meat added, is cooked by Hormel's own formula to preserve all the natural, juicy flavor and tenderness of choice meats. Try baked Spam for dinner tomorrow. Ask your food dealer for SPAM Spam when you shop. You'll discover in baked Spam an economical main course that satisfies the family completely. <laughs> folks, but here they are, the two favorites of our Spam family, George and Gracie. Well, thank you very much. Well, George, here it is September. Yes, Gracie, and the summer is practically over. Leaves are beginning to fall, it's starting to get cold. Squirrels are beginning to gather nuts. I'm staying indoors from now on. <laughs> In nine weeks, it'll be Thanksgiving. In ten weeks, it'll be Thanksgiving again. Picture... <laughs> Picture stars have stopped taking sun baths. Tourists are leaving town. Dorothy Lamour's taking off a sarong. Tourists are coming back again. <laughs> Pretty soon, the rest of the country will be snowed in, but California will be sending oranges to Florida. Grapefruit to Illinois. Raspberries to Florida. Oh, yes, I just certainly killed that joke. Oranges to New York. Yeah. Well, that ought to take care of the fall weather. Sí, yo siempre he dicho que el clima de California es una cosa preciosa. A mí me gusta mucho. Oh, yes, yes, and spreads. <laughs> what is that, Senor Lee? In weather like this, I always go into the Brown Derby and order myself a nice glass of gold milk. Gold milk? Sí. You mean cold milk. The prices they charge, it must be gold. <laughs> For your information, that milk traveled 3,000 miles to get here. So I had to pay the taxi fare? <laughs> well, this is fine. Now the brown derby will take my picture off the wall. Oh, they won't go back into the kitchen just for that. <laughs> By the way, George, I saw Jack Benny and Mary Livingston at the derby last week, and Jack invited me to sit down and have dinner. Really, Arnie? Yeah, Mary ordered a steak, and I had a roast pheasant. What was Jack eating? His heart out. <laughs> Stop kidding about Jack Benny being cheap. He worked very hard for his money. He's been on the radio for ten years, and he finally came out on top. Yeah, by the handful. <laughs> well, now it's time for the smoothies, Charlie, Babs, and Little. Kids, what are you going to sing tonight? It's a song about two comedians talking to each other. What's the name of it? Tree wins. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get it. I, I don't... Oh, well, George, I knew I had something to tell you. Somebody suggested that with the fall programs coming back on the air, you should get the jump on everybody by getting a guest star. My dear Bud, whoever told you that could not have been listening to our program. The sponsor suggested it. And furthermore, Bud, uh, 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 the, the sponsor? Yeah, sponsor. It must be a mistake. See, all the programs I've been on, they brought in guest stars only when the program needed help. The weaker the program, the bigger the guest star they needed. The sponsor wants you to get Clark Gable. <laughs> 
What does he want with Clark Gable? I can't understand that. You can't understand what, Judge? Gable is a movie actor. He's only been on the radio for about four times. I've been on the radio for 12 years. I can't understand that either. <laughs> Guess so. Artie, do you think I need to get, uh, any help? All I know, George, is that for years my family would gather around the radio whenever you were on. And they would sit by that radio until the program was over. Thanks, Artie. And then they'd turn it on. <laughs> Clark Gable is a guest star. Take away his looks and his personality, and what have you got? George Burns. Gracie, Gracie. Mr. Burns. What does it sound, man? If you're thinking of getting a guest star, why not give me the opportunity? I used to be a great Shakespearean actor. Really? Yes, for years I toured the country in various Shakespearean roles. Look, there's something I always wanted to know. In the play Hamlet, was there really a love affair between Hamlet and Ophelia? In the company I was in, there was. <laughs> Anyway, I don't need a guest star. Sponsor or no sponsor. Hello? Spam program? I'm not getting a guest star. Who? I'm the boss oh, of this minute. program. And when I George. say something, I mean it. George. I wouldn't get a guest star if George. you paid me for a Hey, portrait. Pupsy! <laughs> Quiet with that Pupsy. The sponsor on the phone. The sponsor? Oh, um... <clears throat> Hello? Yeah, this is George Burns. Yeah. What? What? Yeah, but that shows that the male star of the program is weak. Yeah, but that shows... Yeah, but that... Yeah, but... Yeah, but... <laughs> Sounds like yeah, but in Costello. <laughs> yeah, but... Well, all right, I'll get Clark Gable and Lionel Barrymore, but Ronald Coleman we don't need. Yeah, but... Yeah, but... Well, I don't know whether I can get them. They cost a lot of money. Oh, you want me to call you back? Oh, you're at a board meeting discussing my option? Oh, certainly I'll get him. You wouldn't want me to get Mickey Rooney, too. Oh, later, huh? Well, goodbye, sir. And uh, I'll spare no expams. Spams. That's a joke. Oh, he hung up. <laughs> well, that makes us one happy little spamly. Lionel Barrymore, Ronald Coleman, and Clark Gable. How do you get men like that? Oh, it's easy. I just drop my handkerchief and they pick it up and I say, hi, to." Oh, stop. I'll say that later. <laughs> Gracie, they're discussing our option. We've got to do something. Well, George, why don't you get an impersonator who can imitate those stars? Say, that's a great idea. And I know just the fellow. He's a great mammoth. A mammoth? Yes. You mean mimic? No, a mammoth. He imitates Al Jolson. <laughs> I suppose if he could imitate uh, Papa Dion... He'd be a poppet. No. Then he'd be a panic. A panic? I <laughs> <laughs> see, you may not know it, but getting an impersonator was a great idea. Down where the trade winds claim. Down where you lose the day. We found a new world where paradise starts. We traded hearts way down where the trade winds play. Music was everywhere. Flowers and re in her hand. Under a moaning of silvery bells, we traded vows the night that I sailed away. Oh, trade winds, what a vow that lovers make. Oh, trade winds are the only made to break. When it is May again, I'll sail away again. Oh, I'm returning, it's not the same. She traded her name, there was a trade wind play. I'll sail away again, I'll sail away again. 
though I'm returning, my love is burning, still it's not the same. You know, no, love is so, trade winds blow, you gotta blow, oh, blow, blow, you gotta blow, trade winds blow. Now, Bud, we're all set. I just hired a great mimic. Well, can he do Gable? He can do anybody. In fact, Gracie is downstairs now, and she's getting a script of Boomtown. Oh, George, I just got it. Here's the script. Did you get the radio senses okay? Yes, except for a few minor changes. Good. Now, will everybody get around me, and I'll read the play. You better. Now, the first scene takes place in a thriving oil town, and there's a lot of hustle and bustle. George, the censor says you can't say that on the radio. Say what? Bustle. (laughs) All right, the bustle is out. Well, where else can it be? <laughs> well, in this, in, in this little town, there's an oil well right in the middle of the street. Now, some careless man leaves a few sacks of TNT lying at an angle. Can't do it. Why not? You've got to leave out the sacks angle. <laughs> All right, somebody left some TNT. George, you're not going to say TNT. Why not? Brother, that's dynamite. <laughs> Some careless man drops a match. Is that better? And sets the oil well on fire. And at that moment, the hero is entering the town saloon, and he's just about to step in. Can't do it. Can't do it. Can't mention step in. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. It was just a slip. Can't mention slip. Can't, huh? That comes under the ban. Underwear? Can't do it. Can't do what? Can't mention underwear. All right, forget the underwear. That's even worse. I suppose to do this play, I'll have to get an okay from the Secretary of the Interior. Can't do it. Can't do it. It's icky. (laughs) Well, this is fine. If I can't do this play tonight, I'll probably wind up without a job and walking around on my bare feet. You cannot do that. Why not? Too corny. (laughs) Well, quiet, everybody. We're going to do Boomtown. If it was good enough for the movies, it's good enough for the radio. I don't want any more interruptions. Oh, that's probably the impersonator. Sound man, open the door. Uh, uh, you can't say that on the radio. Why not? This door is made of wood. Wood is made of pine. Pine is naughty, and you can't say naughty words on the radio. <laughs> Sound man, open the door. Hello, Mr. Burns. Oh, this is Peter Lynn Hayes, everybody. Oh, hello. hello, Peter. Hey, listen, I'm sure glad to get this job, Mr. Burns. I haven't worked for about six months. I haven't eaten since last week, and you don't happen to have a sandwich on you. You mean spam uh, Later, later, Peter. We're broadcasting now, you see. Gee, I, I haven't had a bite since Thursday. George, shall I bite him? Quiet. <laughs> Look, uh, say, Peter, it's very important that you do these impersonations perfectly. I want Lionel Barrymore, Ronald Coleman, and Clark Gable. No, but I can't do Gable. You can't do Gable? You can't do Gable. Well, now I'm in a terrible mess. Here, well, you can take the script anyway. Uh, have you got a knife and fork? Uh, 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 look, don't eat it. Just read it. Bud, will you get the sponsor on the phone? George, what are you going to say to him if I can't, if he can't well, do I'll, Gable? Well, I'll suggest uh, Gary Cooper. I'll suggest Charles Lawton. I'll suggest Georgie Raff. Can't do that on the radio. Why not? Too suggestive. <laughs> Bud, will you get the sponsor? Okay. Uh, Senor Burns, if you want a good mimic, I'm just the man you're looking at. <laughs> You're, you're a good mimic? I'm positive, I think. Mm. I do a very fine impersonation of a cockney. A cockney? Listen, put up your hands and reach for the ceiling, you mug. What kind of a cockney is that? James Cockney. <laughs> oh, quiet. Uh, here's the sponsor, George. I've got him on the phone. Oh, um, hello. Well, I finally did it. I got Ronald Coleman, I got Lionel Barrymore, and I got a big surprise for you. Instead of Gable... I got Charles Lawton and... Yeah, but... Yeah, but... Yeah, but... Oh, you're going back into the board meeting to discuss the option? Oh, sure, I'll get Gable for you. Yes, if I say I'll get him, I'll get him. What do you think I am? Oh. (laughs) Goodbye. Gracie, what do you think the sponsor said to me? Uh Uh-uh, you can't say that on the radio. You said it. Show and his boys will do Rose Room, which, by the way, they play nightly at the Rose Room of the Palace Hotel in San Francisco. Plug. 
But the sponsor wants Gable, and we haven't got Gable. But we've got Lionel Barrymore, so let's do Dr. Kildare. Yeah, but we've got to get Gable. And Gable was in Boomtown. All right, so let's make it Dr. Kildare goes to Boomtown. <laughs> but that still doesn't give us Gable. Well, I've got an idea. Want to hear it? Yes, I'm all ears. Then you play Gable. <laughs> well, this is fun. I'll hire a mimic, and, uh, and he can imitate everybody except the one I want. Oh, that's nothing, George. Great things can't really be imitated. Now, take Spam. I got you into that nicely. Didn't Thank you I, very kindly. I, 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 <laughs> Cold or hot, Spam hits the spot is a phrase that fits Spam to a T. All summer long, millions have enjoyed Spam served cold. This delicious meat will continue as a mealtime mainstay served for lunch, just as it comes from the can, because it's all ready to eat. Now that school has started... You like to send the family away in the morning with a breakfast that sticks to the ribs. Well, here's a suggestion for a mighty good breakfast that's easy to fix and never fails to get the family up in a hurry. Spam and eggs. You don't have to worry about the family going away hungry because Spam, S-P-A-M, is delicious meat with a satisfying taste and flavor. Just open a can of Spam, cut off thin slices and fry quickly in a hot pan, and eggs sunny side up with tender, juicy, golden brown slices of fried Spam is a hearty breakfast as bright as the morning sun, and certainly a welcome change. Give your family Spam and eggs. You'll save time in the kitchen and serve good economical meals. Spam keeps without refrigeration and is always ready for quick action. So ask your food dealer for Spam when you shop tomorrow. Try the several easy recipes on the label, then you'll know why Spam is good served cold or served hot. Slice it, dice it, fry it, bake it, cold or hot, Spam hits the spot. And now for our play. Gracie, we haven't got Gable. I've got it all fixed. Starring Lionel Barrymore, Ronald Coleman, and Clark Gable. Entitled, It Can't Happen Here. George, that's not the name of it. The title is, The Great Appendicitis Operation, or A Scar is Born. <laughs> a scar? Uh-huh. Gracie, what about gay? Leave it to me. Music. Oh, oh. 
As the play opens, we find Dr. Kildare and Nurse Allen in the operating room. The doctor is performing a very delicate operation. It's a very tense moment. Nurse Forceps. Scalpel. Needle. Well, there you are. Perfect job. Oh, thanks, Doctor. Now fill up the hole in my other stocking. <laughs> Enough of that. Where's Dr. Lionel Barrymore? Quarreling with his brother John Barrymore about a face operation. Well, <laughs> of course, there are two sides to everything. Except John's face. <laughs> Nurse Allen, look, I've got my own troubles. Oh, please, Doctor, not so loud. You're disturbing the patient in 414. 414? Mm-hmm. What patient? The one who has a temperature of 109. A temperature of 109? Yes. How can he live? Well, he gets an allowance from his folks. <laughs> temperature of 109 is very dangerous. What did you do with him? Well, I put him to bed with that patient who's got the chills. <laughs> well, I better go up and see him. Nobody's allowed in 414. Gracie, what about Abel Gay? I've got it all fixed. You have, huh? Look, here comes Dr. Lionel Barrymore. Well, I hope you got it fixed. Oh, hello, Dr. Lionel Barrymore. See here, son. Who said you knew anything about medicine? I left positive instructions that little Billy should be kept on a strict diet. And he's brought into surgery with a hamburger sandwich clutched in his hand. Well, I'm... I'm awfully sorry, Doctor. Well, you should be. So I place this little tyke on the operating table and I administered the anesthesia myself. And I stood there looking at him. I stood gazing at that poor face until those tired little eyes finally closed. Well, Doctor, what did you do? What do you think I did? I ate the hamburger. <laughs> Still hungry, huh? Uh, you mean spam burger. Hmm. I wonder where I can find Dr. Ronald Coleman. Please, doctor, you're disturbing the patient in 414. Who is that patient in 414? The one who's got appendicitis. Well, then I must operate. Oh, no, no, his wife won't let you. Why not? Well, she says she won't have anybody else opening her mail. <laughs> Tracy, what about Abel Gay? Don't worry, don't worry. Dr. Kildare, go to surgery G. Dr. Kildare, go to surgery G. I can't go to G. Then go to H. <laughs> Dr. Kildare, What kind of a hospital is this anyway? Please, doctor, you're disturbing the patient in 414. Will you forget that man in 414? Doctor, he's got chills. Did you shake all over? No, only in 414. Gracie, did you fix that clock on the wall? I'm not Gable to tell the time. It's all fixed. Is it? I hope so. Uh, hello? Hello, this is Dr. Shaw. Yes, Dr. Shaw? They just brought in a patient wearing a white sweater. Send stretcher at once. What do you want the stretcher for? The sweater doesn't fit me. <laughs> Some doctor... Uh, Dr. Kildare? Yes, what is it, Senor Lee? Operate quick, Doctor. A piece of cinder fleed me in the eye. It fleed you in the eye? Hey. You mean it flew in your eye? Fleed. Flew? Look, what comes after flies? Flit. <laughs> Nurse Allen, will you go out and look for Dr. Coleman? Please, Doctor. You're disturbing the patient in 414. Who is this fellow in 414? How did, he, how did he get in here without me seeing him? Well, he was an accident case. He fell off an ironing board. A, a ironing board? He, he was pressing his pants and he forgot to take them off. <laughs> Look, Gracie, if we don't get... We got. W when? Later. I uh hope. -huh. Dr. Kildare. Uh, yes, Dr. Heaston. I just got a telephone call from New York that might interest you. This person said there's nothing better for a person who expects a nervous breakdown than a good dish of mongoose. Raw mongoose? No, it's cooked. Who said mongoose is cooked? The sponsor, if you don't get Gable. <laughs> Gracie. Don't worry, don't oh. worry. Here comes Dr. Coleman now. Well, Dr. Ronald Coleman. My dear Dr. Kildare, it's an honor and a pleasure to be a visiting surgeon in your great hospital. I've devoted my entire life to medicine. As a medical man, you know I'm speaking the truth when saying the reward we seek is not material. I don't want glory, I don't want fame, I just want one thing for my work, 
Well, what is it you want? You don't happen to have a sandwich. <laughs> no. <laughs> you mean sandwich. Quiet. This is going far enough. Oh, please, doctor. You're disturbing the patient in 414. Oh, stop with that 414. George, George, the sponsor is on the phone again. Oh, well, good night. Hello. I, I know. I... Yes, I, I know. Well, I, I tried and... I did my best and... Give me that phone. Hello? This is Gracie Allen speaking. What? What? We haven't got Clark Abel. We haven't got Clark Abel. <laughs> Who do you think that fellow is in 414? Well, that's all I want to know. <laughs> and from the new Jolson show, Gracie will now sing, Would You Be So Kindly? Sing it. <laughs> I'm not so hot in my IQ, but that's okay. I've got to tell you I like you and that ain't hey. I'm not so bright, not so sharp, not so smooth in the sizzling phrases. And so I ask you in my curioso way. Oh, would you be so kindly to treat me not so blindly? Oh, would you be so kindly if you please? Oh, would you be so sweetly to sweep me off my feetly? I'm asking you discreetly on my knees. Oh, would you be so gently to say that you'll be true and say it sentimentally just like a tea for two? Oh, would you be so cutely to love me absolutely? Because to put it brutally, I love you. Now, baby, would you be so kindly, so very, very kindly, to show me how to find me a little piece of mind me? Oh, would you be so kindly, if you please? Oh, would you be so goodly, wouldn't you, to treat me as you shouldly, shouldn't you? I'm so misunderstoodly, why must you tease? Oh, come on, I'm waiting for an answer. Won't you be an angel and tell me I'm divine? I have a feeling strangely That you will soon be mine And bells will chime Oh, don't be namby family. Let's raise a little family Cause being like I am Lee, I love you I do and I do mean you Would you like to see the family completely satisfied after dinner tomorrow evening? Well, here's a sure way to do it. Open a can of Spam, S-P-A-M. Take out this tender, delicious meat, stud with cloves and pop it into the oven. Baste with a little orange or pineapple juice. Only takes a jiffy, and the simple recipe is right on the label of the Spam can. When a delightful aroma sneaks out of the oven, you'll hardly be able to wait for dinner to be ready. There's an economical main course that's easy to fix, grand to eat. Be sure to ask your food dealer for Spam when you shop tomorrow. Thank you, Bud. Well, Gracie, say goodnight. Good night. And, Peter, I want to thank you for those grand Im impersonations. But how come that you couldn't do Clark Gable? Well, that would be a very tedious job. In order to do a fellow like Clark Gable, I'd have to stay close to him for about seven weeks. Should happen to me. <laughs> Good night, all. <laughs> Be with us again next Monday night, same time, same station, for another George Burns and Gracie Allen show with Artie Shaw and his orchestra and the smoothies. Until then, this is Bud Heaston reminding you to remember that cold or hot, spam hits the spot. Have you tried Hormel Chili Con Carne? You may think you don't like chili, but Chili Con Carne, the way Hormel makes it, is different, and everybody likes it. Double your money back if you don't like it. Try Hormel Chili Con Carne tomorrow. This is the National Broadcasting Company. Oh.